Hello, BookTube. This is Fred, and you're watching Read by Fred. Today I'm going to be doing a book review. It is a review of The Ancient Mariners, Seafarers and Sea Fighters of the Mediterranean in Ancient Times. This book was written by Lionel Casson in 1959. The copy I have is a second edition print. It was written in 1991 and it was published by Princeton University Press. I'll put up some images from the book here so that you can have a look as I'm going through the review. So I was pleasantly surprised with this book. I found that um, the chapters were short. They were between 10 to 20 pages each. Uh, so it was easy to read a chapter or two in the evening and then put the book down and pick it up the next day and start fresh with a new chapter. The storytelling was very well done by Casson. He does a great job weaving a story and engaging you as a reader. So it wasn't a dry run of facts and figures. You actually enjoyed the story. The book focused on five areas, trade, war, piracy, exploration, and marine archeology. span So in terms of marine archeology, span uh, the first find was in 1900 by sponge divers off the coast of Antithicara, I believe the island was named. And that's where the Antithicara device was discovered. But uh, the big find were all the statues, the Greek Greco-Roman statues. And this was from the first century BC, I believe. And it was a huge find. And then um, afterwards, there were a bunch of other attempts to find wreckages. But it wasn't until Jacques Cousteau developed the scuba equipment. You only had about 30 minutes of air in the tanks. Uh, so you couldn't do a lot of deep diving, but it was enough to find a number of wreckages. So you, in 1982, they found one off the coast of Uluburons, uh, southwest of Asia Minor, from dating from 1350 BC. And it contained a huge amount of copper. So you had about 260 pound ignots of copper. You had perfume, gold, silver, ivory, hippopotamus teeth, raw glass, and ceramics. In terms of war, the first use of a ship in war was in 2450 BC uh, as a troop transport by Pharaoh Sahure. They talked about how the Minoans had a large navy and they would handle any piracy happening in the eastern portion of the Mediterranean. It talked about the sea people who attacked Egypt in 1221 BC and 1194 BC and how in both times Ramses III fought them off. And it talked about how all this happened during the months between April and October. So any maritime shipping, any maritime warfare happened between April to October because those were the months where the weather was more favorable. The book also mentions the wars between Rome and Carthage. And it talks about how Rome was able to amass a fleet of 250 ships in one summer to fight its first war against Carthage. And in both naval battles, Rome was victorious uh, against Carthage. However, Casson talks about how Rome lost half of its fleet or a quarter of its fleet to weather patterns because of the inexperience of the Roman captains. In one instance, 100,000 men were lost because of a bad storm as they were coming back from Carthage. And of the 300 ships, that um, had sailed, only 80 were able to limp back into port. So it was a huge loss for the Romans. In terms of exploration, you had the Phoenicians who explored across the Mediterranean and they found cities in the south of France and northern Africa. They even commissioned someone named Hanno to go past the Pillars of Hercules and set up colonies past there. I think he got as far as Senegal at least that's what the book says. And then you had uh, Pharaoh Necho in the 7th century commission Phoenicians to try to find a way around the world, I guess. But uh, what they did was they circumnavigated Africa. At least that's the story told by Herodotus. And in 300 BC, the book talks about how Pythias in 300 BC uh, traveled up to Britannia, Ireland and the North Seas to map that area. For trade, the book goes into how trade was the biggest thing that happened in the Mediterranean. The book talked about various ports, including Piraeus, the Athenian port, Delos, the free port that was set up by Rome in response to Rhodes, uh, various contracts uh, between moneylenders, shippers, and ship owners. 
The process of contracts were pretty interesting and Kasson talks about how money would be exchanged. So basically a money lender or a group of people would give the shipper a large sum of money and then he would jump onto the ship, travel to say Egypt or the Black Sea to purchase his wares. And then those wares would be transported either back to the home port or to other ports along the Mediterranean where they would be sold. And in return for the money that was given to the shipper, uh, the shipper would pay back that money plus about 22%, up to 22% interest, depending on how dangerous the uh, process was. In some cases, money lenders lost everything. In other cases, they got their money back plus a huge amount. So it was a very lucrative trade for money lenders. And Kasson also goes on to talk about how trade was affected by piracy. And piracy not only affected trade, but it also affected um, Greek civilization. It changed the way the Greeks did business along the coast. So the next topic is about piracy. Uh, piracy was a pretty big thing in the Mediterranean. So you had raiders that um, would sometimes board ships, but mostly would raid um, coastal towns and coastal villages. And they would not only steal goods, but people as well. And it got to a point where towns and villages moved their cities further inland, and that brought trade to a standstill for about a hundred years. From there, uh, Rhodes became a major trading port, and it sized a large navy that would patrol the seas around the eastern Mediterranean, which kept piracy to a minimum. Once the Romans got involved in the eastern portion of the Mediterranean, um, the navy, Rhodes Navy, was diminished and piracy came back up, it ramped back up. It wasn't until 69 BC when raiders destroyed the Delos port that Rome actually took notice and did something about it. And then they commissioned Pompey, who in 67 BC built up a fleet, broke the Mediterranean up into 13 sections, and each section had its own commander and fleet. And Pompey managed a fleet of 60 ships, and they would drive the raiders. And this time, these were the pirates of Cilicia. So he drove them out of the western portion of the Mediterranean, back into the eastern portion, and finally got rid of them. And it was Octavius, after he had won the Civil War, who set up a permanent navy to patrol the Mediterranean, protecting shipping routes and getting messages out quickly from one area to another. And the Romans were pretty proud of their navy. They stamped coinage with uh, images of their ships. So it was a good book. Kasson did a great job weaving a story and um, giving the reader a real sense of what it was like in the Mediterranean times for Maritimers. I would definitely recommend this book. It was a wonderful book and it was a great read. Thank you so much for watching. This is Fred, and you're watching Read by Fred. It talked about how and how he invented the scuba equipment. And uh, let me see if I can get you scuba, scuba. The book also talked about the, this book was written in 